how y'all doing with my YouTube viewers? How are you today? Well, my topic today is going to be on the topic of Trayvon Martin. I know a lot of people have been following this story about a 17-year-old teenager, Trayvon Martin, in Sanford, Florida, who was um, coming from the 7-Eleven in a gated community with um, purchasing um, some candy, some Skittles, and some iced tea for his younger brother, stepbrother that was at the house, and he just went for a walk, and he was pursued, and he was gunned down by a neighborhood watchman by the name of George Zimmerman. Um, this is a heartbreaking story. Um, many homes are interrupted by this story, being that the gunman Zimmerman was not um, brought up on any charges or was arrested and the Sanford police and the Sanford um, County is going to go by the law of him being able to stand his own ground and um, many witnesses were out that evening and there were also people that made phone calls to 911 that they heard some screaming outside something was going on and by the time police arrived to the scene the young man was dead um the father of the young man was looking for his child for like three days and um it's so disturbing about the story it's just so heartbreaking i just can't really put everything in detail if you've been following the story you already know what has happened now in the process of happening and a lot of people are on the uproar about it a lot of people are getting involved in other states even myself I'm wearing my hoodie right now to represent for the young man Trayvon Martin hoping that this will bring his family some release and that this George Zimmerman will be brought up on charges and also be arrested this is going out to every young boys life out there young black males that are out there me myself have young black male children in my family and only god knows if something like this was to ever happen what state of mind i would be in right now i don't know if i'm going to wait for justice i might just have to do um something like take justice in my own hand and believe to go down for what i believe in you know that's that's what i would that's what I'm saying right now, but that's probably where my state of mind would have went if this was my child or a member of my family's child or whatever. Um, as I'm moving along in this story and why I'm making this video is that I just feel I need to do something. Um, the state that I'm in, they're, they're not um, taking any action against this like a lot a lot of other states surrounding me are doing things like going out there getting people involved making um letting they they voice be heard about this whole thing um you know for the prayers for the family for the justice for the family that is heartbroken over it none of this is going to bring Trayvon back but it can help somebody's child out there so this would never have to occur again where somebody's child is being gunned down by some guy george zimmerman another george zimmerman that this something like this won't happen in the future for the life of somebody else's child you know um i also want to say i just want to just put my heart out there for tracy martin and also for Miss Fulton, his mom, that, you know, my heart is there for you. And I just pray that justice will prevail, that you will get what's right for the life of your child. You know, all those who are out there fighting now to get things done, I applaud you. I honor you for what you're doing right now. This is some serious stuff, and I believe if this did not go, um, work, got out to other places, if it wasn't like a, something that was blown out to the public, this would have been swept under the rug, and your poor child would have just been dying in vain. 
and his life is going to mean something even when it's gone um his spirit is with us right now i haven't been able to rest since i heard this whole thing i just recently just got active with it because i didn't know this case this had happened on february 26th you know it wasn't on the news until somebody had to go and do an investigation and find um Trayvon's um the phone calls that were made the 911 calls and when Trayvon's father was looking for him for like three days and he was in the morgue and nobody even did no investigation on the scene when this had happened no police officers went around asking questions have anybody saw anything or heard anything they just took this boy's body and just put it in a morgue for three days when his father had to come looking for his child showing a picture that anybody see his child and then finally he gets to the morgue and his son is dead in cold blood the more you get into this story the more it breaks your heart breaks you down of all that had happened and how this case whole thing this thing was handled and I truly believe that the chief of the department should be fired everybody in that whole department that was there on the scene should be fired I don't believe these people something is wrong something is definitely wrong that this young man life was just taken like that and nobody did a full investigation. I remember at a time, um, somebody was shot outside the window, outside my window, I'm sorry, outside the building I was living in, outside my window in the apartment complex that I lived in. Someone was murdered, made four something a.m. in the morning. And, it, and then I know that the police officers came, knocked on my door, detectives and everything, because my window was like right there in the front. And they came and they knocked on the door and they asked, did anybody hear anything? And I said, yes, I did hear something. I did hear some like gunshots or firecrackers in the night or whatever. But, you know, I didn't know what was going on. I didn't bother to look out the window because when you hear something like that, you're not going to look out the window anyway because you're afraid something might come flying at you. So all I could do, and it was at 4 a.m. And so I was like in my bed anyway, but I did hear it. But you like half sleep, half woke. So when the detectives knocked on my door and everything, I came to the door and I just like asked what was going on. And, um, and you know, of course I'm afraid. I'm there by myself. So you don't want to open your door. And they said, I'm the detective. And they put the thing and I opened it. And then I said, yes, sir. And he said, ma'am, did you hear anything? Um, um, there was anything going on outside last, you know, under your window, whatever, whatever. And I said, sir, I did hear something. So I'm just saying, I'm just sharing that story. Here's like what happened with Trayvon is that I can't believe they didn't even go and ask neighbors or people that might have heard anything or saw anything. This is what really upsets me about how this whole thing was handled. And it was just like not done very well, not not done where, you know, it felt like they was going to do anything about the fact that Trayvon is dead. And I truly believe somebody is behind Zimmerman. This is why they wanted to keep it quiet. Something is, else is going on in Sanford. And I'm pretty sure there might be more um, stories coming up about young black men that might have been harassed in that gated community of in Twin Creek or whatever the name of the place is. I, 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 I'm sorry, I don't remember the name, but I know it's a twin something in the community of Sanford, out in Sanford, Florida, in Central Florida. And I'm now just saw a video with a young man that just told his side of the story. He was out there walking his dog. Then the young lady, and why are all these people, pop, they asking why are these people, because nobody's asked anything. Nobody said anything. Only person probably knew anything happened and knew something happened to Trayvon was his girlfriend, but she was devastated and probably in trauma. She was traumatized because she kept hearing him saying on the phone when she was speaking to him, someone is following me. And heard a man come up to him and ask, what are you doing in this neighborhood from what I got from commentary that I had gotten from what the lawyer of the Martin family was saying, Mr. Crump, and I got those all that information from him. So what do you expect from a 16-year-old girl who, who, who's on the phone with her boyfriend and next thing you know she doesn't hear anything anymore and the next thing you know you find out he's dead. You know, and people are going to ask the question of why is anybody coming up now because nobody was asked or questioned about anything or about the crime when it had happened. Nobody did an investigation. All this man said is that he defended himself and he had blood on his face and wet on his back and grass and dirt on him. When two witnesses just came forward and said that they saw 
this man on top of the kid or straddling him on his back. And you tell me that's not enough circumstances evidence so this man could be arrested and turned into the authorities and prosecuted for murder in cold blood? Before I get any more emotional about this whole thing, um, YouTube people, family and friends on Facebook, tell me what you think. Because I'm just like so, my mind is so scrambled right now because of what I've heard, what I have already heard from those tapes. I studied, I studied, I watched this for the last couple of days. I'm not resting because of because I'm thinking about my family members. I'm thinking about the children in my family, my friends, their children, children that I work with, children that I watch, all of that. Just something like this happening to people that are close to you and people that you know. And it goes on all the time and nobody seems like we got to care about our community. And we got to care about our young people. This can be anybody's son, anybody's brother, anybody's friend. So I'm looking forward to hear what you got to say. Hope there'd be some justice for the life of Trayvon Martin. May he rest in peace.